Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. All right, we're taking a live look out of the Alamo City. 79 degrees to start your KSAT pigskin weekend. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. This is the sound of pom-poms because in case you missed it last <laughs> night, Antonian lit up the scoreboard, Woo! taking down Holy Cross. Antonian winning the opening game of the KSAT Pigskin Classic. If y'all are not awake yet, well... I think Sarah just set your alarm <laughs> clock with the pom-poms. Thousands cheered on the Knights and the Apaches under the brightest lights in the Alamo Dome. First week of high school football, led by quarterback Jace Descano. Antonian took an early lead, went on to finish strong. The final score, 47 to 20. And of course, quarterback really put on a show. The Antonian quarterback named the Davis Law Firm player of the game, thrown for four touchdowns, had more than 230 passing yards. Also, an all-state quarterback last season, so expectations are high. Last season, Jace threw for more than 2,500 yards, 30 touchdowns. Wow. You can read more about him right now. Just head to ksat.com. And in case you didn't know. I just hope people don't think. <laughs> the KSAT Pigskin Classic continues today with a triple header. Southside takes on Somerset at 1130 a.m. Jefferson faces <laughs> Uvalde at 3.30 p.m. And O'Connor battles out Brandeis for that big closing game at 7.30 p.m. Scan this QR code on your screen right now because you can still get tickets to the game. All the games are inside the Alamo Dome. And if you can't make it there, you can watch all the action right here on KSAT 12. See, now you pull out the pom pom. There you go. Are y'all awake yet? Are y'all excited? I'm so excited. <laughs> I got to give a huge shout out to our entire sports team, everyone who put everything together, and our social media team, because last night you could see all the highlights from Antonian. Just decimated. I love watching our Instagram page. Exactly. Oh, and we have Mike, our new mascot. Mascot, yeah. Am I, wait, is, 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 are we calling him Mike or, or Mike? Mike? No, it's Mike. Mike. Okay. It's Mike. It's like, M-I-C. Like a microphone. Like I, okay, I'm just making yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Don't it's do not call Mick. him Mick. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, okay, it's Mike. I thought you were about to call Mike Osterhage our mascot. And I was like, ah, uh, you never know. Do we know who our mascot is? No, we oh, do it's not. It's a secret? I actually don't know. I actually really don't yeah, know. That's fair. Neither do I. That was we're, my we're... first question this morning. Who is Mike the mascot? Mm. The world may never he, know. He was born right here in KSAT. Yeah, he was. you got to <laughs> stick around to see him if you haven't seen him yet. It definitely is a hoot. Well, the weather, not so much a hoot, okay? Uh, Today is going to be our 59th 100-degree day of the year, tying for first place for the most 100-degree days. Yeah. Okay. Straight up, it's going to be hot. We're in the dome today, though. Yeah, we're going to be in that AC. All right, 79 degrees outside, 78 degrees outside. I can still hear those pom-poms there off in the distance. 72 in Bernie, 77 at Castroville, 74 Lost Maples, and 71 in Kerrville. All right, here's a look at the forecast around San Antonio today. 87 at 10, 96 already at noon. Winds are going to turn to the east this afternoon at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. It is going to be a hot one, 104 for the high temperature. There's a percent chance for an isolated shower or storm in the hill country. And as you look at the weekend forecast tomorrow, things change a little for us. It is still going to be very hot, 105. But between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m., there is a 30 percent chance for a few storms. I'll tell you those details on that storm chance coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right, a lot of news to talk about this morning. New, a fight at a Southside sports bar turns into a shooting. That's right, Tiffany Huertas joins us live in studio with how this un un unfolded. Now, Tiffany, was anyone hurt? Good morning, Max and Sarah. Yeah, this is a story that's developing. San Antonio police say a man was shot in the foot and taken to the hospital. This happened around 2 this morning at Ojos Locos Restaurant near South Sarzamora Street and I-35. San Antonio police say after a fight broke out inside the sports bar, a woman attempted to break up the fight, and that's when she allegedly pulled out a gun. A man was shot in the foot. Police say the 28-year-old victim was taken to Brook Army Medical Center and is in stable condition with non-life-threatening injuries. The woman was taken into custody. Now, the shooting is still under investigation. The woman could be charged with aggravated assault. Max, Sarah. Thank you. So this morning we are continuing to learn more about 28-year-old Jesse Garcia Jr. San Antonio police say he had a hand in the shooting of two police officers on the southwest side. Now we've learned he was released from jail twice this past year and he has a criminal history going back at least 13 years. Police Chief William McManus tweeting this out, quote, why wasn't he in jail? Why weren't his bonds increased? 
The first assistant district attorney for the Bear County District Attorney's Office saying it's frustrating. And we expect to hear more from him in the next half hour. We're also taking a closer look at one of the crime scenes in this case, the Westwood apartment complex. San Antonio police say in a Facebook post, Garcia hid at that location because he has friends there. So we reached out to SAPD to find out how many times they've been called to that complex so far this year. Our numbers show over 400 calls. Many of the calls are listed under disturbance, which is a low priority call, but sprinkled in there is theft, burglary and narcotics. Well, Sam Garcia, who lives there, says this was the most concerning police action so far. I felt it in my chest. It was so loud. I was like, oh, my God. And, you know, we're in this neighborhood. We're kind of used to it, but it was really close. We reached out to the Westwood apartment complex manager to learn if there is something that can be done to help the people living there. We are still waiting to hear back from them. Now to the courtroom where a man will be spending at least 15 years behind bars after a jury sentenced him in the shooting death of his brother-in-law. It took jurors six hours to decide Kiet Wynn's sentence. Uh, Wynn pleaded guilty on Monday to a deadly shooting in the July shooting of 2021 right outside of a nail salon. Prosecutors wanted the jury to sentence Wynn to life. Time now, 6.06, 78 degrees. Here we go. Let's Go! We are talking pigskin classic all morning. These videos hey, did you cool. see the ins Instagram? Did you see the Instagram where they're painting the field? And I, I didn't see that it's one. Super cute. Go on Kesa Instagram and check that out. Also, coming up in our next block after this break, I went around the newsroom, mm -hmm. Max, and asked a lot of our anchors mm -hmm. what their role was in high school football oh, games. Nice. Who was on the field? Who was the stud? Who was the quarterback? We're going to let you know in just a bit. All right. And if you, for some reason, aren't going to be at the Dome today, aren't going to be on the couch watching the games, you have plans to do it outside, do your errands, run your errands, do your activities, spend time with the family outside early. You know, they're hot one. We're going to be checking in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. You're going to hear us talk Wait, about it the all pom -poms? morning. Oh, hold on. Oh, goodness. CRB. Look at that. Hold on. Boom. We got a football. We got the pom pom. Look at this. This is fantastic. All the way back up here. It's all right. So, you're going to hear about us talking about the Pigskin Classic, KSAP Pigskin Classic, all morning on GMSA. I got to say, I've been excited. I woke up this morning. I texted you guys, like, it's going to be a great day. I, I know. Can feel I it. was like, I love this energy, yeah. Max. Well, I decided to have a little fun with it. That's why I went around the newsroom. Nice. And I asked some of our <laughs> anchors about their high school football memories and what role they played on and off the field. You on the football team or what? I was on the football team. I was a receiver and a quarterback. Oh my God, so you were the stud. Because marching band was cool. Well, I guess for the first year I was, I did clarinet on the field. And then for the last few years I did flags on the field. So oh, there was no instrument, color. there were no instrument playing, you know, when you're in color guard, yeah. It was a long time ago, Sarah. <laughs> Have you ever seen Friday Night Lights? Yes. That was where I'm from. Midland Lee, Odessa Permian, football was huge. Melophone, which is basically like a trumpet and it's on steroids. Did you make shirts with puffy paint? Yes, yes, we did all of the puffy paint. I remember for senior year for homecoming, we did like the big overalls. Uh, well, I didn't participate in the sport of it because I did not want to get hurt. So I was actually uh, in choir. Sure, you were like, love that letterman. No, I was not. I'm, no, I was kind of shy and quiet, believe it or not. So they would often tell us to ease up because we would just full blast. Okay, show me your socks. You're ready. Football enthusiast right here, baby. Let's go. We would open the game with singing the Star Spangled Banner, of course, and then our alma mater, uh, South Hawks, class of 007, baby. By the way, speaking of letter, my letter jacket still fits. I may wear it on SA Live. I have for the past few years. <laughs> I need this flag routine. <laughs> the flag routine? Show it to me. Uh, you have a broom? <laughs> <laughs> Puffy paint, man. Puffy paint. But gotta keep that one alive. This is fantastic. All the puffy paint. Um, my favorite, you were like, oh, just went up straight up to David's. You on the football team or you what? Football team or what? <laughs> you starting or what? You starting tonight or what? I will say, <laughs> I know Mike Osterage. He was actually a pretty good quarterback back in the day. Wait, he's, I don't think he played quarterback. I'm pretty sure he played quarterback. I thought he said he played, uh, I don't know. No, I'm like pretty sure he played quarterback. Something back. No, not quarterback. The, the, the other, the cornerback? Other back. Yes, I think he said cornerback.
cornerback. Mm, he doesn't strike me as a cornerback. I'm, I'm going to have to go. I, he told me in the video. I'm going to go okay. back and watch. You know, we can just ask him. We're going to see him out there all morning. All right. Y'all were on you. fire last year. <laughs> Let's just talk about that for one second because the Sarahs were killing it out there. I'm, I'm just out here I'm, just throwing the ball. I'm going to test my out. athletic ability today when we're <laughs> out there at the Alamo Dome. I mean, how often do you get yeah. to be out there in the Alamo Dome? Sure. On the field. On the field. On the field. And it's such a great opportunity for these high school teams. Yep. First right. game, you know, out of the gate, playing under the big lights at the Dome. Tip. You were there yesterday, Yeah, right? it, incredible. The venue, the environment. It's going to be crazy fun. And I'm so excited to tell you a little bit about what happened yesterday. Antonian lit up the scoreboard against Holy Cross to win the opening game of the KSAT Pigskin Classic. Thousands cheered on the Knights and Apaches under the bright lights in the Alamo Dome in the first week of the high school football season. Led by quarterback Jay Toscano, Antonian took an early lead and went on to finish strong. Now the final score, like Max, you mentioned, 47 to 20. Incredible right there. It's awesome. I, I... Great. It, it almost, I want to give a lot of credit to our KSAT team because the highlights, especially on Instagram and whatnot, it looks like it was shot from like ESPN. Yeah. yeah. Like this, <laughs> this is Professional coverage. This is an awesome opportunity for these kids. It's an amazing opportunity for them, for the entire community to, to see these guys, you know, on the field, at the Dome. Look at that run. It's incredible. Oh gosh. The thing is, like, they do this stuff every weekend, but, like, the quality under the brightest lights. I mean, this, Look at these plays. Awesome. Yeah. Incredible. Well, and now football. all of this continues <laughs> today with that triple header. Southside again takes on Somerset at 1130 a.m. We're going to be out there. Now Jefferson faces Valde at 3.30 p.m. and O'Connor. Honor battles Brandeis at 7.30 p.m. And you can scan this QR code on your screen because you can still get tickets to the games. All the games are inside the Alamo Dome. And if you can't make it there, you can watch all the action right here on KSAT 12 News. And a programming reminder, the Little League World Series International Championship can be watched on MeTV at 11.30 a.m. The Little League World Series U.S. Championship can be watched on MeTV at 2.30 p.m. All of that really great. And the 2023 MEAC SWAC Football Challenge kickoff can be watched on MeTV at 6.30 p.m. Cable subscribers can watch all these programs live at abc.com slash dash live. We have all this information on ksat.com. I just, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm missing the cricket championship. This is devastating. <laughs> no, I, I am really excited for today. And you're going to be out there after the show? Yeah, we're all going to be out there. It's going to be lots of fun. Yeah. What was your favorite part about last year? Honestly, just the environment on the field, like getting all the, it, the it, teams, KSAT members, throwing the football like around. It was fun. It was like a pep rally. It, kind of it was. <laughs> it was like a tailgate pep yeah. rally. Like everyone was so excited and this year is going to be bigger and better. We have Mike. We, we have, have our Mike. mascot, Mike. We do Mike. have Mike. I, I thought you were talking about Mike Hosting again. <laughs> and, and we, we got Mike. We, we do got, have, we have him Mike and Mike. His letterman. He said <laughs> yeah. he'll be wearing Wait, it. Wait, Mike or Mike? Both. Mike Osterhage, <laughs> not Mike, our new mascot. Yeah, what about you guys? What was your uh, favorite know, part of last I just, year? I'm a huge football fan, mm -hmm. and so I just love kicking off this football season. Quite literally. Quite literally. Last year I did quit, uh, kick a field goal, well, a close-up field goal. Still counted. <laughs> but we'll point. see. We'll see what happens. We've had people on social media say she has to do it again. Oh, she has the pressure. The pressure. <laughs> she has to do it. <laughs> okay. And then we have to do slow motion of it. All right. Ooh, okay. Well, kinda. slow it down. <laughs> All right. Well, let's transition to weather and let's talk about how, you know, the last couple of days, the grid has been uh, close. So supply and the demand here. And I'm showing you right now on ERCOT's website by about seven o'clock tonight, you know, when we start to lose solar and wind energy, uh, it'll, be, it'll be another close day. Not nearly as close as it was a few days ago, but it is something that we're going to be keeping a close eye on. Here you can see the supply, which is the blue line. And and the red is the forecast demand. Again, once again, a close call today and tomorrow. It'll be a good idea to conserve energy. Uh, and so that is why CPS has issued a yellow day. CPS Energy has issued a yellow day. It's best to conserve energy today from 3 to 9 p.m. Just turn up the thermostat by a couple of degrees and make sure to avoid using uh, 
things like your washing machine dryer during the peak heat of the day during these hours 3 to 9 p.m. So that's some good advice there because it is going to be a hot day. 104 in San Antonio, 102 Kerrville, 101 in Yavaldi. It'll be 101 in Eagle Pass, 103 in Del Rio, 100 in Beeville, 104 in Pleasant and a whopping 108 in Catula. Take a look at neighborhood highs. 105 in New Braunfels, 102 in Hondo, 101 in Divine, 104 in Floresville, Yavaldi 101 degrees. So take advantage of the quote unquote cooler weather out there right now. 78 in San Antonio. Good morning in Hondo where it's 74. Good morning in Bernie. It's 72 degrees. 71 in Kerrville and 78 at Stinson. All right, in your case at 12 hour forecast by 10, we're already going to be in the upper 80s, my friends. And then by noon, 96 degrees in the afternoon, 104 for the high temperature. So it is going to continue to be hot this afternoon. Notice that there is a small 10% chance for a stray shower or storm. That's mainly going to be up in the hill country. We have better rain chances, though, tomorrow and Monday. About 30% coverage, so not everybody is going to see rain, but there will be a few isolated showers and storms tomorrow and Monday, all because there is a very weak cool front across North Texas. This is a not as hot front. It's still going to be hot, but not as hot because of this front moving through. Take a look at the future cast this afternoon, 4 p.m. You can see that in the hill country, there could be one or two stray showers. Again, it's likely going to stay completely dry here in San Antonio. But as that front gets closer tomorrow, we'll see our rain chances shift toward the Alamo City. Now tomorrow's going to start off uh, quiet and uh, again relatively warm near 80 degrees. By noon it should be mostly sunny and quiet. But as that front gets closer, a few storms will pop up in the hill country in the early afternoon. Now, a friendly reminder, it is still going to be very hot tomorrow. In fact, 105 for the high temperature. That would be our 60th 100 degree day, which would mean that 2023 would be the year with the most 100 degree days on record. But we could end up getting a few isolated downpours tomorrow. Coverage will be about 30% in the afternoon, and then that'll continue on Monday too uh, as we see that front wash off. So 10% chance in the hill country today, 30% Sunday, 30% Monday, 105 Sunday, 100 on Monday. See, wow, that cold front knocks off a whopping five degrees from 105 to 100 degrees. And then looking ahead to the week, highs are going to be right near 100 degrees every single day. A few isolated showers possible on Tuesday as well. But all in all, a hot summer weather pattern as I believe NISD starts school on Monday, the last district for San Antonio area to start school on Monday. They'll be back to school and it'll be hot. God, the last week of August. I know. Still in those triple digits. And guys, guess what? Justin Horn and I crunched some numbers this morning. It is looking like this is going to be our hottest summer on record. Ever. Antonio. Yeah, records date back to the 1880s. So. Wow. Hey, but some good news. <laughs> hey, Tap Tuesday Classic. Woo! Great transition. Time now, 621, 78 degrees. Oh, it's the best day of the year, and we're not just talking about KSAP Pigskin Classic this time. It's also National Dog Day. Aww. What? We'll celebrate furry family members coming up. In honor of National Dog Day today, San Antonio Pets Alive is waiving adoption fees for dogs and puppies this weekend as a shelter tries to clear all their kennels. Dogs and puppies adopted from Sapa will go home spayed and neutered with vaccinations, flea and tick prevention and a microchip and heartworm testing. That's actually really expensive. It's a great deal. Sapa is also saying donations will be accepted. There's three locations you can swing by. The Petco Love Adoption Center, that's off of Northwest Loop 410. The Medical Care Center on Marbach Road and the Rescue Center at Animal Care Services off of Highway 151. All right, we want to see your pups on KSAC Connect. Go to the KSAC Connect page under the pet section. Tell us about your dog. What makes them so special? We might just show them on air Wednesday. And we is, want to is get this my sister National though? Dog oh, Day Oh, their started. sister is that. Scooby. That is adorable. Those are my babies. I adopted them. Uh, sister was adopted here from oh. ADL, and Scooby was adopted from Animal Care Services in Corpus Christi. How old are they? 
Uh, Scooby is turning nine this year and sister oh, is five. So cute. Scooby is on the couch. Hi, Scooby. He's watching right now. Okay. Hi, Scooby. All right. Time now. Just about 626, 78 degrees. We'll be right back with all our KSAT pigskin coverage. All right. Taking a look outside with the roads at Trans Guide. Um, actually, a lot of cars there at 410. And maybe a lot they're of, headed to the dome. Maybe they're headed to the dome. And everything looks pretty smooth out there. If we see any incidents, we will let you know about them. My son can't stop talking about it because he's like, this is like really awesome, Mom. <laughs> so it's, it's a big deal. All right, fans out ahead of night one of the second annual KSAT Pigskin Classic. We had Antonian Holy Cross, thousands in the stands, cheering on the Knights and Apaches under the brightest lights at the Alamodome. Quarterback Jace Descano stealing the show, a star for Antonian. Hey, honestly, just what a show of performance he put on. 47 to 20 is your final. Oh, Antonian just laying down a foundation for what is going to be a great weekend. And scan this QR code on your screen because you can still get tickets to the game, all the games, of course, inside the Alamo Dome. If you can't make it there, you can watch all the action right here on KSAT 12. And program reminder, the Little League World Series International Championship we watched on MeTV, 11.30 a.m., the Little League World Series U.S. Championship Watched on MeTV at 2.30 p.m. And the 2023, 2023 MEAC SWAC Football Challenge kickoff can be watched on MeTV at 6.30 p.m. Cable subscribers can watch all of these programs live. ABC.com slash watch dash live. We have all this information right now on our website, ksat.com. <laughs> so... We were talking about last year, the first annual, I don't even know if you can say first annual, KSAT Big Scene Classic. <laughs> what was your favorite part? Um, okay, so there is a part, Max. Mm -hmm. You were in a boot last year, so you right. weren't doing the running. I was doing the running. Right. You were like, sir, go long. Uh -huh. I really didn't think I would catch that pass. That would have been really unfortunate because it would hit you right in the face. Yeah, well, I, I caught it. You did? You did a gronk spike? I did a gronk. It was awesome. It was. It was a lot of fun. This year, um, I'm actually wearing a boot. Right, so we switched. I, I'm going to be quarterback. I've been warming up the arm. So I'll be doing the throwing. So Sarah the Spivey field. has been asking us to throw her the ball at the weather center. I'm um, really. As your, your first task, do you think you can make the throw? Uh, she's on. getting off, off the chair. I'm a runner. <laughs> nice. Got him. What, a, what a quarterback right, right here. there. We're running that. the triple yeah, option this morning. It. We love it. Sarah, don't reveal my quarterback secrets. Okay. <laughs> you know you're athletic when you pose with the ball. <laughs> Like this. So Woo. cute. Okay, so we Yay, are going sports. to be sports. going to the Alamo Dome. We are so excited. Last year I kicked a field goal. We'll see if I can do it again this year. I honestly have no clue. Okay, outside right now it is uh, not necessarily comfortable, but temperatures are going to be the coolest. They will be all day long 78 degrees at the airport right now and looking ahead to your day today just know how hot it's going to be by noon 96 104 for the high temperature today we'll have east southeast winds at about 5 to 15 miles per hour all right today will make 59 100 degree days that includes today's forecast of 104 my friends that means we tie today for the number one spot for the most 100 degree days on record. I can hear the cheering in the back there of the studio. That ties 2009 and we are expected to see more 100 degree days in uh, the future. In, in fact, tomorrow it'll be 105, but there is a chance for rain tomorrow as well. And so coming up in the forecast, we'll talk a little bit about the chance for rain, a not so hot front moving through and what the week ahead looks like as well. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We have a lot to talk about locally and across Texas. We now know one man is injured after a fight at a bar turned into a shooting. So San Antonio police say this all happened around two this morning at the Ojos Locos restaurant near South Star Zamora and I-35. Police tell us a fight broke out inside the sports bar. A woman tried to break up the fight. That's when she allegedly pulled out a gun. Now a man victim shot in the foot. Police say the 28 year old had to be taken to Bamsey at last check is stable, non life threatening injuries. The woman the suspect taken into custody. 
She could be facing charges of aggravated assault, but right now, police still investigating, trying to figure out what exactly happened. Now to a clearer picture of the man at the center of a police shooting, carjacking, kidnapping, manhunt, and standoff this week. We now know that man that we now know that was released from jail twice this past year. Police say they were trying to arrest 28 year old Jesse Garcia on multiple felony warrants when he opened fire at them with a rifle. One officer was hit. Another was injured by flying debris. Now, police say Garcia led them on a chase to a west side apartment complex, stealing another car at gunpoint, shooting a second officer on his way. Eventually, the suspect arrested, now sitting in the Bear County Jail. Get this, he has more than $4 million worth of bonds. So a total of three officers were hit by his gunfire or the debris from him shooting those bullets. Garrett Berenger explains the frustration over why someone with so many new arrests was on the streets for so long. It's a criminal history that stretches back to his teens. Department of Public Safety and Bear County Records have mugshots for 28-year-old Jesse Garcia going back as young as 15 years old. He spent time under supervision of the juvenile courts and as an adult has convictions for giving police false identifying information, drug possession, and felon in possession of a firearm. And in the past year, things have picked up. He was arrested and released on bond last September for drug possession and unauthorized use of a vehicle. Then again in June for car burglary, evading arrest, and felon in possession of a firearm. With two of his officers still in the hospital this morning, San Antonio Police Chief William McManus tweeted out, why wasn't he in jail? Why weren't his bonds increased? The first assistant DA for the Bear County District Attorney's Office said in a press conference, the bond system is frustrating. But until we have a system that's more based on risk, where judges can look at, okay, they can look at the defendant, they can look at the case, they can look at the criminal history and have more authority to remand people when they're clearly dangerous, um, then this is gonna continue to happen. Judges set bonds, he noted, not the DA's office. But Garcia's September cases also haven't been indicted 11 months later. Pressed on why, Henriksen didn't have a clear answer. There, there seems to be a reason, um, but I don't, I don't really want to comment on that until I'm certain uh, that I know exactly uh, what the answer to that question is. Nor did he know why prosecutors hadn't pushed to raise or temporarily revoke Garcia's September bonds after his arrest in June. I don't know the answer. Maybe they were relying on pretrial, um, but they could have filed motions to increase and that, that did not happen. Instead, when Garcia's bondsman from June lost contact, those bonds were doubled and warrants issued. The warrants that SAPD was trying to serve on Thursday. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. And San Antonio police say in a Facebook post that the reason Garcia hid out the Westwood apartment complex is that he had friends there. So we reached out to San Antonio police to find out how many times they've actually been called out to that complex so far this year. Our numbers show over 400 calls to the Westwood apartment complex and that officers were out there nearly every other day. Many of the calls are listed under disturbance, which is a low priority call, but sprinkled in there is theft, burglary, and narcotics calls. Jose Garcia, who lives there, says this latest episode, though, was the most concerning of police action so far. I felt it in my chest. It was so loud. I was like, oh, my God. And, you know, we're in this neighborhood. We're kind of used to it, but it was really close. So we reached out to the management of the apartment complex to learn if there is something that could be done to help the people living there. We are still waiting to hear back from them. Well, Longhorns in Limbo in Northwest Bear County. It's a family that's kept cows on their property for nearly a decade, and they now say the livestock could be getting the boot. The city of Gray Forest is quoting a city ordinance and possibly state law that doesn't allow them. Daniela Ibarra tells us why the family is having trouble getting answers before their deadline next week. In Gray Forest, neighbors treat Stella, Sienna, and Savona like celebrities. People love them including Chandler Baker. They're pets. His three-year-old daughter has grown up with them. I have pictures of her going from, you know, being super, super tiny to now, and she's, I'm planning on having her show them. But there's a chance she won't ever get to. Earlier this month, Baker says he got this letter saying the Longhorns violated city ordinance. The ordinance says the Bakers are required to get a permit for the Longhorns. If they don't, the letter says the Bakers could be fined up to $500 a day or their longhorns could be seized. Baker says his parents apply for a permit every year. This time, he says it got denied. Gray Forest City Ordinance says landowners need to have at least three acres to have three cows, 
The Bakers have four acres. We're sitting here not having the full uh, understanding of why this is even going on. Debbie Swisher, who lives nearby, says she and her other neighbors don't mind the Longhorns. They bring smiles to the people who stop and visit them. Hashtag leave the Longhorns. The city of Gray Forest Mayor, Amanda Waldrop, refused repeated interview requests for this story. The city's attorney has also not returned our phone calls. The mayor did tell us in an email the city had gotten several complaints about city ordinance violations, animal welfare worries, and possible breaches of state law. Makes it sound like we're criminals. When asked which law the bakers could be violating, Waldrop said she couldn't tell us. We want the best for these cows more than anybody else. They're our pets, they're our friends. Baker doesn't know how he'll break the news to his daughter. We just want to keep our cows. Um, I want to keep my daughter's friends. I want to keep the Moo Moo's. Um, I, I don't understand why now it's become the hot topic. Danielle Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 642, 78 degrees. Day two of KSAT Pigskin Classic Look. Oh my there it goodness. Is. All right, so what you're looking at is our mascot. That's my KSAT mascot. So many high school mascots um, are going to be out and about on the field today, but we're going to want to introduce you to our new mascot. He doesn't belong to a high school. He belongs right here. KSAT, KSAT 12. There you go. All right. If you're not at the Dome, if you're not going to be staying at home to watch the KSAT 12 Big Skin Classic, you're going to be outside. You're going to need to know. It's going to be hot. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Our KSAT community team is excited to collect donations for the San Antonio Food Bank during all the games of the KSAT Pigskin Classic happening today. So right now you can scan the QR code on your screen, make a donation, or of course head to KSAT.com to see a full list of all the items the food bank says they need the most this time of year. So, Sarah Spivey, if people aren't going to be joining us at the Dome, which we're going to be there in like 40 minutes. Yeah. They're going to be outside. What can they expect? The heat. Yeah. Our 59th 100 degree day today, guys. Very, very hot all around San Antonio. But hey, tomorrow there is a chance for some rain in the afternoon. So some folks will get some rain this weekend, but everybody will be experiencing that heat. Outside right now, the first light of the day, it is 78 degrees at the airport. Good morning in New Braunfels, where it's 77, 74 in Zagin. Not all that bad in Bernie. So 70 degrees in Bernie this morning and 70 in Kerrville. There may even be some light fog out in Bernie right now as humidity is at 100%. And you look at the day today, we've got nothing but sunshine in the forecast. All right, 87 at 10. Already by noon, we're going to be in the mid-90s. As we look toward this afternoon, 104 for the high temperature. There is a small 10% chance for a stray shower in San Antonio, but mainly up in the hill country. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, but generally plan for the heat today. 102 in Kerrville, 103 in Del Rio. It'll be 100 in Laredo, 108 in Catula, 104 in Gonzales, and 104 in Canyon Lake. All right, let's take a look at the weather pattern setup. So that heat high is still the dominant weather pattern, meaning that it is going to stay hot with that heat high way above us in the upper levels of the atmosphere. However, closer to the surface, there is a cool front moving through the panhandle of Texas. Now, this is really honestly only going to drop temperatures by about five degrees or so in San Antonio. So we're going to go from near 105 to closer to 100. So still hot, just not as hot. But it is going to allow for a few thunder showers across Texas today, mainly from San Angelo up to Dallas. But a stray shower across the hill country is possible this afternoon at 4 p.m. As we head into the day tomorrow, we'll start off quiet. Generally, temperatures will be near about 78, 80 degrees tomorrow morning. The most of the day should be quiet, but in the afternoon between the hours of 2 to 8 p.m., that's when we'll have some showers and storms on the radar. Coverage will only be about 30 percent, but the chance is still there. And a friendly reminder, it is still going to be hot, 105 degrees. But if you can get a quick shower or a quick storm, temperatures will dip down briefly from that. Then as we look into the evening hours later, about to, again, from about 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., that's 
that's the chance for an isolated shower or storm and we'll continue to see that possibility on Monday as well. Rain chances 30% tomorrow, 30% on Monday, only 20% on Tuesday. So as you can see, most folks will miss out on the rain. There will only be isolated rain out there, but the possibility is still there. All right, let's take a check on the tropics because this is we're heading toward the peak of Atlantic hurricane season. You can see that there are two areas out in the Atlantic that will be looking at a little bit further on down the line that have a decent chance of developing into a tropical system. We do have tropical storm Franklin, which is expected to stay out in the Atlantic, but it will strengthen to hurricane status. Finally, there's an area that's about to enter into the Gulf of Mexico that has a 90% chance of developing into a tropical system. It will likely impact areas from uh, Mississippi coastline all the way to Florida. So we'll keep you posted on that. That will not impact our weather directly in San Antonio. However, temperatures are still going to be hot in spite of the small chance for rain in the coming days. We'll be back with more news after the break. Good morning. Welcome back. All right. We are ready for the case at Pigskin Classic. The school spirit is off the charts. The weekend has begun. We're already in the second day. We had Antonian just dropped the hammer last night, winning 47 to 20. So many schools mascots. They're making appearances. They're making some noise on the field. That's right, but it's not just school mascots, Max, that are going to be making those appearances. KSAT is proud to announce this week that we have our very own Lucky Charm ready to pump up everyone. That is right. So it is Mike, our new mascot, SA Live's Jen Tobias Strusky, shows us how the team at Starline Costumes helped piece Mike together. What I really enjoy most is the process. Getting to come here every day, this is my job, um, is very exciting to me. From start to finish, just getting to be part of the design process in this, being part of my community, getting to see how this is going to reach other people, that is what is important to me in this, is that seeing that it's something beyond myself. It's easy to see the passion that goes into mascot creations here at Starline Costumes. Marshall Chase is one of the newest fabricators on the team, working with veteran mascot makers and taking the lead on this project. The goal? To create our KSAT 12 mascot. It's that idea that the costume itself has a sort of life and a magic that goes beyond you and you've taken people's ideas and they've taken your ideas and that's going to become something else that brings joy to people. That is what really excites me about this project is, is the process itself. From start to finish, Marshall collaborates creative ideas to get to his final look. The details range from shoe style to smile and even the eye selection, it's all thought out. As he gets finished up, all of the little things that we have uh, decided on and changed and tweaked over the time um, of his creation will kind of get sewn into place. Everything gets finished and fitted together so that we can kind of see what it'll look like as a finished picture. A lot of our mascots are built for large arenas, so they're going to be seen from very far away. Whenever we're approaching this mascot's design, I was very careful to consider things that you might see that would kind of uh, tear down the illusion or the magic, so to speak, and I wanted to really get that character through. So we really took into consideration in the design process and the wearability for the actor behind it, um, what would be most easy and also what would kind of conceal everything and bring that character to life. You know, since I've been doing this for so long, he did confide in me and I said, this is what we're going to do, like this, like that. Took chest measurements, the sides on the top, you know, how big the ball's gonna be. It was just me back then. I didn't have people that are as creative as Marshall and Chandler in the back. And with them, nothing's impossible with us. I think one of the joys of being a costumer in any aspect is that when you do your job to the best, nobody really knows who did it. They just know that it's done well. That was awesome. So your favorite part about Mike. I'm awesome. so glad that we are able to voice our opinions. Yeah. <laughs> I love his shoes. And the second I said I love his shoes, what did you say? What did I say? I love his eyebrows. I love I was his like, eyebrows. Clearly we're fixated on different things. Yeah, here. I was like, oh my gosh, he's got great eyebrows. Of course. But yeah. All right. So you can check out Mike. Meet him on the field today at the Dome. I'm excited to hang out with him. I'm excited to meet Mike in person. All right. Time now, just about 657, 78 degrees. Taking a look outside with the roads with Trans Guide. The sun is up almost seven o'clock, about to head over the dome. Lots of lots of cars on the roads. 
this morning. We don't see any incidents. If anything does pop up, we'll let you know about it. We only got 10 seconds yeah. left. We'll Woo, see you at the dome. Is. We're headed on over. Let's go. Hey, Good Jeff morning, San Antonio. We are here at the second annual KSAT Facing Classic. We've been getting hype all morning long. Because we are in the Alamo Dome this morning. We are so excited for those three big games that are going to start to kick off at 1130. That's right. So it was funny because I was joking earlier. I felt like Terrell Owens on the Dallas Star just out here. But nice. we've been practicing all morning. That wasn't a great throw. But Sarah Spivey, all-star wide receiver. We got Sarah Costa. Let's see. What do we got? Playing, what do we got? Drop the pom-poms. Drop the pom-poms. I can go further than that. One, oh, one hand, everyone. Look at that. Nice, so, Max. We are going to be here all morning long. We're going to be hyping you up. We're going to be having fun. We've been running routes. Yes. Honestly, I found that I, maybe I can, like, go 25, 25 my, yards, yards yeah. as the throw. Okay. As a catch, though, you were catching, like, 40-yard bombs. Thank you. I can yeah. catch. I can yeah, catch. Like Throwing, not so much. Okay, so it's not every day that I get to do the weather in the Alamo Dome. So let's bring up the weather. Temperatures currently right now around San Antonio. About 80 degrees. This is the coolest it's going to get all day long. At temperatures up in the hill country, low 70s, so not all that bad. As we take a look at the satellite, you know, not that many clouds out there this morning, so all we've got is the sunshine. This is a look at the highs today. 104 in San Antonio. Generally, temperatures well above 100. And when we look at the weekend, today is going to be our 59th 100 degree day. Tomorrow, 105. But there is a chance for some rain up in the hill country and in San Antonio tomorrow. Meteorologist Justin Horn will talk about that. For now, though, let's go. So excited. I'm actually excited to meet Mike, our new KSAT mascot. So, guys, stay with us through the morning. We'll be running routes. We'll be talking to Mike. We'll be talking to our KSAT Wait, crews. Are we going to talk to Mike or are we just going to be showing Mike? We're going to be talking at Mike. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Tiffany, Mike. Back to you. Back to you, Tim. Woo! I love this energy, and I know the Sarahs are going to have so much fun today. Now, the KSAT Picks in Classic continues today with a triple header. Southside takes on Somerset at 11.30 a.m. Jefferson faces Uvalde at 3.30 p.m. And O'Connor battles Brandeis at 7.30 p.m. And we're going to have a QR code later on because you can still get tickets to the games. All the games are inside the Alamo Dome, and if you can't make it there, you can watch all the action right here on KSAT 12 News. And again, good morning to everyone here. We're going to talk a little bit about what's happening here across our area. This morning, we are talking about a fight at a south side sports bar. It turns into a shooting early this morning. San Antonio police say this happened around 2 this morning at the Ojos Locos restaurant near South Zarzamora Street and I-35. Police say after a fight broke out, inside the sports bar, a woman attempted to break up the fight and that's when she allegedly pulled out a gun. The man was shot in the foot. Police say the 28 year old victim was taken to Brook Army Medical Center and is in stable condition with non life threatening injuries. The woman was taken into custody and could be charged with aggravated assault. The shooting is under investigation. Hundreds of inmates transferred to other facilities around the state after major fire damaged a Huntsville prison. The fire broke out early Friday morning. The Texas Department of Criminal Justice says more than 600 inmates had to be evacuated. About 400 were transferred to other state facilities. No injuries were reported. The cause of the fire is under investigation. And as high school seniors look forward to ways to get academic scholarships, one Houston teen has earned one that is geared toward her passion for aviation. Now, with her eyes set on the sky, 17-year-old Jaden Walker hopes to inspire the next generation of female pilots. With her own dad being a pilot, Jaden was interested in becoming a pilot from a very young age. She wrote scholarships and essays about her passion and became one of two recipients out of 300 applicants to receive a pilot certificate from the Leroy Homer Foundation. The Leroy Homer Foundation, they created a scholarship that would award a private pilot certificate, which is the first pilot license, if you will, in becoming an airman. Changing that kind of stereotype and just like inspiring other females. Leroy Homer, a pilot of Flight 93, which on September 11, 2001, took off from New York, New Jersey. 
Leroy and those on board never made it home, but they took heroic action. And wearing Leroy's name, Jaden is aiming to make history. And a pilot in Plano helped reunite a nine-year-old Texas girl with her beloved doll. She thought she lost her doll after she accidentally left it on a plane in Tokyo. But thanks to social media, word eventually got to a man living near the family. An online post alerted a friend who told another friend, who told Jim, who happens to fly into Tokyo often. And Jim found the doll in Lost and Found. By nature, I like helping people. I mean, that's just what I like doing. 5,880 miles to uh, Haneda from uh, DFW. The Dominguez family is very thankful for the Dallas community who helped get the doll back. And in honor of National Dog Day, San Antonio Pets Alive is waiving adoption fees for dogs and puppies this weekend as the shelter tries to clear out kennels. Dogs and puppies adopted will go home spayed or neutered with vaccinations, flea and tick prevention, and microchip and heartworm testing. The organization says donations will also be accepted. There's three locations you can swing by, the Petco Love Adoption Center off Northwest Loop 410, the Medical Care Center on Marbach Road, and the Rescue Center at Animal Care Services off Highway 151. And we want to see your furry friends on KSAC Connect. Just go to the KSAC Connect page under the pet section and tell us about your pup and what makes them so special. We want to make sure to show them on air. Time now, 806, 78 degrees. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Seven 78 degrees sounds nice right now. We have a lot more to come. Max and Sarah are at the Alamo Dome. Woo! We are here at the Alamo Dome for the KSAT Pigskin Classic. We are getting pumped up. I'm getting my arm warmed up. Ready, Max? As Go off. Nice. nice. One handed. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the forecast. Uh, we're going to talk about some heat today and maybe some rain chances tomorrow. But first, I want to start with ERCOT. What's going on there? We've had a lot of questions. Hey, we're going to lose power. We had that issue on Thursday when it got fairly hot in today's supply and demand. Yeah, it's a close call. Again, razor thin margin here. But as of now, it looks like there's just enough supply for demand. It's kind of where we've been most of the summer. Uh, but as of right now, unlike yesterday, ERCOT is not uh, calling for voluntary energy reduction yet. That could happen later today. Uh, here's a look at the supply and demand forecast. And yeah, it's a close call today. I mean, we're, those numbers are very close. Uh, we see that again tomorrow, but then it starts to get a little bit better as we get into next week. We'll have some slightly cooler temperatures. That should help with the supply and demand, and hopefully we won't have to worry about this. But it is another CPS Energy yellow day. Between 3 and 9 p.m., you want to continue you, your everyday conservation measures, but there's a couple other things you can do there uh, to help out. With the power grid, here's a look at today's highs. And yes, uh, it's another day in the triple digits. At this point, it looks like this is going to be one of the hottest summers on record, one of the hottest August on record, just the way it is. Uh, 106 in LaGrange, 106 Austin, 101 Creosote Springs. A very, very toasty day. 101 Bernie, 103 Comfort, 105 in Bandera. And right now, we're sitting at 80 degrees, fairly humid, and it stays humid through the first half of the day, and then humidity falls off a little bit during the afternoon, uh, so it'll be a little bit drier. So here's your case at 12-hour forecast. Noontime, 96, mostly sunny. By 3 o'clock, 101. We top out, as we said, near 104, and it takes until 8 p.m. for those temperatures to drop back down below 100. Uh, hey, just head out to the case, uh, case at Pigskin Classic, and you won't have to worry about it. It's cool inside the dome. You won't have to worry about these uh, kinds of temperatures. And our rain chances, well, they do go up. This is the exciting part. Not much today. I think we can see a couple of showers north of San Antonio. But as we get into tomorrow, weak frontal boundary starts to slide in. That brings some rain chances with it, and this sticks around on Monday. Now, this is not a very well-defined strong front. It's not going to be a big cool down for us, but it stirs up some of these showers and storms, and that's exactly what we're looking for. We need the rain. Uh, the drought has been so very bad. So let me walk you through the forecast here. Here comes the front. This is today, 4 o'clock. Notice most of the activity is between, say, San Angelo and Junction. Hill Country, that's where you may see a couple of showers pop up. I just don't think we see a lot here in San Antonio. But as we get into tomorrow, and by the way, everything kind of dies down with the loss of daytime heating. But once we get heating tomorrow along this front, then you're going to start to see more showers and storms blossom. Now, it will still be hot tomorrow, 105. So we're right out ahead of this front. Temperatures may spike, 
but if we can get some rain, it'll take temperatures down. Uh, right now we're forecasting 105 here in town, 105 in Hondo, 101 Kerrville. But as the front comes through, you're still seeing showers and storms, at least the chance of some showers and storms through Sunday evening before this kind of dies down. I think again on Monday, we'll have the potential to see showers and storms as well, which is why we have that 30% chance. So that's kind of the, the way it looks. And we should point out that by tomorrow, we should have the most 100 degree days on record. I don't know if that's a record we want, but we're going to get it. Uh, 98 Tuesday, 99 Wednesday, and we may be back in the 100s, adding to that number by Thursday and Friday. We'll be right back. Happy second annual KSAT Pigskin Classic. I just want to point out, Max is sweating. I'm sweating. We've been running routes. Well, by that, I mean, Max. Lizzie and Bermia has been running routes. I'm not running the routes. I'm doing the throwing. Yeah, so okay. let's see. Let's see how, how, how we do. You want to call the route? What are we doing? I don't know how to go that way. Okay. This, okay, okay, that way. That way. Nice. One handed. Right. Out here looking like Jace Sestano. And I bring that up because he is the Jeff Davis Law Firm player of the game for night one of the second annual KSAT Pigskin Classic. And if you missed it, here are some of the highlights. It was quite a game. Honestly, awesome. Glad that we started off so hot. Thousands filling the dome last night. Nights, Apaches under the brightest lights at the dome. Obviously, we talked about them. Jace Toscano and Antonian, they took an early lead. 39-yard touchdown pass, wide receiver. Aiden Samiago and the Apaches, they held on for the rest of the game. They finished big, 47 to 20. Uh, Toscano, he threw for four touchdowns. Really just amazing. Tw 230 yards, like we said. Davis Law Firm, player of the game. And of course, I mean, we got the running back too. Landon Prouty punched in two touchdowns. And Michael Moreno, he scored another one. Knight's biggest play of the night, a 73-yard touchdown run by Marco Gomez in the second quarter. I mean, it was quite a night and couldn't be excited enough to be here for the second year. We got night one. It's out of the way. It was a great game. But today, Sarah, we got a triple header. So excited for all those games, 2.30, uh, excuse me, 11.30, 3.30, and 7.30. But hey, also amazing, you can contribute to the KSAT community food drive all day today. The case, the Pigskin Classic will be collecting um, all kinds of food for the food bank's most wanted items at the Alamodone. Doting is simple. Just bring non-perishable food items to any of the football games. Drop them into the donation bins located at the entry point of the dome. You can also donate online. A $1 donation provides seven meals. And Sarah Spivey, where are you? Because I, are you where the insiders, the KSAT insiders are going to be today? Yes, I am in the press box where the KSAT insiders are going to be. Now, we've still got insider tickets, $45. You get a goodie bag. You get to be in the press box here. Obviously, this is just we're just a couple of hours away from this being filled with people. In fact, take a look at this. So I was joking a little bit with uh, Robert here, but you know those KSAT Fiesta medals that are super rare that everybody fights over? I would argue that this foam thingy is just as <laughs> valuable and just as much of a collectible. So you would get this, you get a program, $10 value too. So again, $45, KSAT Insiders, pick your game. You can come here, be in the press box. By the way, you can also watch KSAT on the TV. There's a little delay, there I am, waving that special insider thing, <laughs> okay. So uh, coming up in a bit, we're going to talk a little bit about the weather pattern. You just heard from Justin that there is a chance for rain tomorrow, which is exciting. But let me tell you, if you want a way to stay cool, it's 104 today, but it's a cool like 72 in the Alamo Dome right now. So I'll toss it back to you guys. <laughs> we go in. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Sarah. So jealous of your KSAT swag you have up there in the insider booth. Okay, I have been quarterbacking, trying to quarterback all day. Max, we're going to do an out route left. Is it good? Hut, go. Okay, there we go. Nice. One-handed. Oh, Look at that. We're out here, guys. We're going to be through the morning. We're learning routes. We're going to have a full route tree done by the end of the day. Sarah's going to be throwing out routes, tight screens. We're going to be great. I'm so excited. It's going to be a great day. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. One of the schools in KSAT's Pigskin Classic today is the Uvalde Coyotes. And when they take the field today, one player will wear the number 21 in honor of the 21 lives that were lost at Robb Elementary. KSAT 12 sports producer Daniel Villanueva takes us inside the team's new tradition. It was pretty cool to be voted by the rest of the team and to be chosen like that. And then obviously Justin did a really good job last year. And so I'm just excited to kind of carry it on and then pass it on next year to someone else and keep the tradition going. Caden Smith is a fourth generation Uvalde Coyote, right? He, he has a, a, a family that's steeped in the tradition of Uvalde and the, the Coyote football team. Um, you will see his dad. Everywhere Caden goes, you know, to celebrate him. Caden Smith, he's a good guy. He tries his hardest in everything we do. He's always been a leader. We all knew he was the chosen 21 before we even voted. He's real, he's real liable, and he's in on everybody. We're in the weight room, and someone's not doing what they're supposed to do, he'll get on them. So the day we chose captains, he called the four who were voted into uh, his office, and then he sent them all out, and he stayed to talk to me for a little bit and just told me, you know, Obviously, Justin did a great job. He talked about that, and he said, "Now it's my turn to kind of keep the tradition going." And you know, said it's not just being a football player anymore; it's you know, standing for something more and you know, representing the community. He definitely has all the characteristics they're looking for to represent this team, and he understands the magnitude of it and the responsibility of it. And and it's heavy, right? It's it, you know that jer that jersey's heavy. The number means everything here, so the community looks to it, and then. It's just good to go out on the field and then know you're, you know, you're standing for something more than just a football game. You're you know, representing something. And what kind of reaction did you get from your family? Dad cried, mom cried, everyone was happy, everyone was excited. I mean, it's been a lot of work. You know, I've, I've been here for my entire life. So I've always, I mean, I've grown up here. My dad's a native here. So, you know, everything that my mom works at the resiliency center, she helps the family. So everything that happened, you know, it affected my family a lot. And then, so when I was chosen, it, it just made them really happy. You know, it was just a, it was a good opportunity and a good experience. What do you think will be like the first time you come out there wearing the jersey and knowing what, knowing what you represent? I think it'll be surreal. I think it's going to be, you know, more than just going out there to play a game. It's going to be, you know, going out there to represent somebody and, you know, 21 different people. A special story there. Now time is 825, 80 degrees. Let's take a look at... Coming up, more KSAP Pigskin Classic fun coming up after the break. Good morning, San Antonio. Good morning. A lot on our plate today. Because we have the KSAT Pigskin Classic. Obviously, we are in the Alamo Dome where all of these high school teams will be playing under the dome lights today, starting at 1130, Somerset, Southside, 330, Uvalde Jefferson, and then 730, Brandeis and O'Connor. But, you know, we're just getting our arms and legs <laughs> warmed up we're getting all warmed up but i gotta say it has been an amazing experience so far it has been electric to start the morning i mean we came out here we're the first ones here the empty dome it was so calm quiet but it really is the calm before the storm so speaking of the storm quiet we're here Woo! hey stop pigskin classic there goes my left ear drum all right we got sarah spivey last year let's go sarah a field get there, goal get there. oh let's go nice. Last year hit nice. a field goal. Yes, that was literally a weather toss right there. Good job, Max. Okay, this is my arch nemesis, uh, the goal post, because last year it took me three tries to make a field goal. I'm hoping I get it on my first try today, just like catching that football. We'll wait and see, but for now, Let's talk about the weather. All right, it is 80 degrees in San Antonio. This is gonna be the coolest it will be all day. Take a look at highs, 104 in San Antonio. Elsewhere, even across the hill country, higher elevations, temperatures are going to be above 100 degrees. Guess what? Today makes our 59th 100 degree day in San Antonio. That ties a record for the most 100 degree days in a year with 2009. It's been a hot summer, but guess what? Tomorrow, there is still a chance for some showers and storms. It's still gonna be hot. Meteorologist Justin Horn will talk about the weather uh, tomorrow and the week ahead, including a check of the tropics, which are starting to get pretty active. All right, Max, let's see if I can throw this back to you. Ready, Max? Oh, wait, Max, uh -oh, Max, uh -oh. hands, hands, right, I'm, hands. I'm, I'm Here just we go. worried about the camera. All right, nice. Oh my gosh, you better catch Woo! that. <laughs> right in the face. I don't wanna get it. <laughs> Great, great toss, Sarah. Great toss. Great. great All right. Toss. Dropping the thing. Dropping the mic. Dro right. Dropping, the not the mics. Don't pom -poms. drop the mic. Speaking of mic, though, 
we will be meeting our new KSAT mascot, Mike, through the morning, so don't go anywhere. But for now, Tiff, what's going on? Uh, thank you so much. It looks like so much fun. We'll check in with you in a little bit. Let's get to some news. A San Antonio water system customer is looking at a nearly $400 bill in a house no one lives in and has no running water. So instead of giving you a solution, they test your common sense and making you believe you are the issue instead of them. He's upset that every time he calls Sons for an explanation to the bill, he says he is given the same line about a leak. Antonio Cruz says he paid a plumber $300 to check his home for leaks and says it was cleared. But he was told there's something off about the new electric meter Sons installed in July. That's when he says the problem started. He says the meter readings are all over the place, which doesn't support the claim that there's a leak. I'm 100% sure they're sending wrong readings to... To, to our bills. I'm just asking them to come and check out the new meters because uh, San Antonio residents were paying the high, the high water bills of water that we haven't used. Saul says the new electronic meters are more accurate than the previous meters across the system. To hear what Cruz has done to get to the bottom of the alleged overcharge, head to ksat.com to read the full story. And just one month after two people from New Braunfels died in a plane crash in Wisconsin, the commemorative Air Force Central Texas Wing is setting up a scholarship in the name of one victim. Zachary Coley Moreno was 20 years old when he died. He was one of two passengers from New Braunfels involved in the deadly plane crash. The National Transportation Safety Board and Federal Aviation Administration are investigating what happened. Mentors of him say they hope this scholarship keeps his legacy alive while creating an opportunity for the next generation. You know, what we wanted to do for Zach, we, we're going we're gonna to try to do for, for as, many, as many kids as we can. In just a few weeks, the team has raised more than $45,000, but they say that's not stopping them anytime soon. Time now, 8.33, 80 degrees outside. We know they're having lots of fun. Let's check in with Max and Sarah. And since yeah. we're getting ready for the KSAP Pigskin Classic, Max, let's go. running a slant. Let's go. Okay, we're going inside, though. Oh, my gosh. All right. I, all right, go. Oh, wow. <laughs> we'll be right That's a touchdown. <laughs> I was like, Tim Tebow, Demarius Thomas, and we're good. Knocking the Steelers out of the playoffs. You're welcome. Into the ground. All right, welcome back. I got to show a picture real quick because it's International Dog Day. That's Penny. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, we're buds. We're buds. Uh, <laughs> happy International Dog Day, Penny. We, uh, we're glad that we adopted you. And don't forget, you can send in your pictures to KSAC Connect on the International Dog Day of your puppy. Hey, maybe you can incorporate football. Okay. Dog yeah. Football. It looks like she's smiling. She always looks like she's smiling. <laughs> she's deceiving, though. <laughs> You, you got a puppy over there, too. <laughs> yeah. We need to see a picture. Yeah. Okay. We'll send it. Send them in. KSAT Connect. All right, let's go outside for you right now. We've got clear skies here in San Antonio, 80 degrees. It's a warm morning with southwesterly winds at about 3 miles per hour. Humidity is at 81%. New Braunfels, you got a 88% humidity there. The temperature is at 77. Bottom line, it's a warm, kind of muggy morning. As we progress into the afternoon, you'll see humidity come down a little bit. Uh, still probably enough, though, to create a little bit of a heat index. Here's our case at 12-hour forecast. As you plan out your Saturday, 96 at noon time will be up around 100 by 2 o'clock, 102 by 4 p.m., and 104 by 5 p.m. And you see those 10% chances of rain. They're low here in San Antonio. You go north of town, they will increase a little bit. If you're in the hill country, I'd say it's more on the order of a 20% chance. 98 degrees at 8 o'clock, 94 at 9 p.m. Here's a look at the forecast highs. Hundreds to go around. Another day in the triple digits, okay? Uh, could be some more record territory here. 104 Pleasanton, 104 in San Antonio, 104 Gonzales. You get the idea. Uh, and as we look at the weather setup here, here's what's going on. We still have our heat high. Now it's trying to shift to the west a little bit, which will eventually open the door and allow front to kind of slide down behind this. But we've got some storms up across parts of Missouri this morning. A little bit of severe weather up there. Uh, and as this front, which is right now across north Texas, slides south, Helps create some showers and storms as we get into uh, this afternoon. Again, across the hill country. So this is mostly north of San Antonio today. We'll probably see some of those cloud tops in the distance. Just don't know that we'll see any rain here. But as we get into this evening, a few of those storms could creep down into the hill country. And then it's tomorrow 
tomorrow afternoon, specifically that we start to see storms, uh, showers and storms develop around here. Now, I don't think there's a big severe weather threat here, but we do need to mention that you can get some gusty winds out of this and, and we can't completely rule out a, a storm pulsing up to severe levels. But if we do see that, it would be very brief. Uh, temperatures are still going to be very warm out ahead of this uh, front as well. 105 in New Braunfels, 105 in San Antonio. This is tomorrow, uh, 105 in Hondo. And then the front comes through and by, say, 7 p.m., we still got some showers and storms around. Hopefully we get some rain out of this. It's not going to be a drop buster. This is not going to be a long term rain event, but uh, it'll be scattered about. I think even as we get into Monday, we'll stop some rain chances as this front kind of lingers around. So uh, here it is laid out for you. 30% chance tomorrow, 30% chance on Monday, and still even a lingering chance on Tuesday before we take those rain chances away. Very quickly, let's check in on the tropics. We've got Franklin, which is going to be a hurricane. It looks like now as it moves north, still not affecting land though. A couple more systems out way out in the Atlantic. And then one here uh, that is starting to take, um, take on more organization. It's, it's uh, interacting with land at the moment. Uh, but the forecast is for this to move north. Still some questions as to exactly where it can make landfall or how strong it will be. But all indications are that Florida is in the crosshairs for this one. So folks along the coast of Florida, Panhandle, down along the west coast, need to pay close attention to how that evolves. 105 tomorrow, 100 Monday, we showed you the rain chances. It does cool down a little bit behind that front. 98 on Tuesday, 99 on Wednesday. We'll be right back. Good Let's morning. Go. I am so excited. We actually just got some new KSAT swag. We got, Look to, at this. Oh, here's we got KSAT pigskin classic. We got the necklaces. We got we got these the uh, waivers. The, the you got waivers. the pom poms. The I got the pom poms. KSAT and of course, I mean, we didn't we, get jerseys though. And Mike we got Osterage. Mike Osterhage. Fiona, Fiona, Jen, and I kind mm -hmm. of right. But the coolest thing is, yesterday we were doing our, our pep show here, uh, pep rally, and my jersey matches the field that right is now. Can you turn around for us? Okay. Look at it. Love Oster it. Hage, number 12. What's number 12? Is that your number? It's case at 12. 12. <laughs> I don't. I hope she was kidding. I don't know. Uh, so we actually had a little bit of a, an argument this morning because we know that you were a letterman in high school. Yeah. We yeah. know that you played football. Right. All four years. Uh, well, high school when I was there it was three years. Okay. So yeah, JV and then varsity. Okay, couple but years, he, so. Max was like double downing. He was quarterback. He. I was like, no, he was not. What was it, Sarah? And Sarah came he out was, of nowhere. I was like, he was cornerback. He was cornerback. He was okay. Corner and corner. Mike, what, what you were play? you? I played nose guard, nose tackle on so defense. So neither. But he did. And offensive line, a little bit of linebacker. Okay. Oh, line. Yeah. Yeah. Mike we had a small team. Of all hey, trades we over had a small here. team, but you know what? We were good and we went to the state finals. So look at that. Yeah. All right. Look at so you. So you played nose guard. Yep. We also have a field goal kicker. We got Sarah Spivey. Let's see. How are we going to do this? Oh, that was. Well, Matt. Wow. Wow. Nice. nice. I got it. Hands. We got okay. it. Catch down. It. Now we're going to do my arch nemesis, the field goal. I'm tossing that to our producer, Colin, who is going to hold the football for me. All right. Let's see. Am I better than a Cowboys kicker? Let's see. Okay. Oh. All right. Here we go. That was big talk. I'm. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. That's yes. two for two, baby. All right, back to you guys. <laughs> wow. Whoa, I am so proud of you, Sarah. I think it's the um, the paint that we put yeah, on. Yeah, she has the KSAT pigskin eye paint, eye black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, did you see the game last night? Oh, yeah. Antonio and Holy Cross. We're going to go over was... Don't steal the okay, thunder here, Mike. Come on. But I, but I tell you, you know, it's the, the fourth game, if you will, the kickoff on Friday night. That mm -hmm. it lived up to all the hype, and that's just oh, setting yeah. the stage for today. You know, last year, every game it was nail-biting, oh. so close, great games. And this year, um, hoping for the same. Of course, everything kicks off at 1130. We have Southside and Somerset, 330 Uvalde and Jefferson, and 730 Brandeis and O'Connor. So we are pumped up. Sarah Spivey getting us warmed up, making that field goal on live television. After talking trash. I mean, if you, she talked trash. She lived up to it. I love it. Tiff, what's going on?
I love that. We need to do that slow motion and we'll bring it back to you. <laughs> now, there's so many incredible stories coming out of this event. Brandeis head football coach Charles Bruce and a longtime friend and former teammate David Molesky, who coaches O'Connor's football team, sat down with KSAT 12 sports producer Daniel Villanueva to talk about their time in high school together. He was one of the popular guys in his class, and I hope I was one of the popular guys in my class. <laughs> F-100 pickup truck. What color was it? Green. Green. Dark green, light green. It was a, it started off as a seafoam green and then I painted it dark green. Could you have a name for it? And now it's my truck. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Do you remember what these cars were? How did you drive? Check this out. 77 Chevy Monza. It was silver. Yes. Blue Bonnet Dance Hall was a big happening place for because I was country music and wore boots and jeans and you know that kind of stuff so that was always a big deal uh, and you know you had the typical parties and whatnot that, that we'd, we'd go to and and now if you went there you, you're going to see probably everybody. I didn't typically do blue bonnet. Um, <laughs> there was another little spot I can't remember the name of it right now um, where uh, it was more like I won't say it wasn't rock wave um, Pappy's was there. Pappy's? Oh yeah, no, I'm with Pappy's too. <laughs> yeah, Pappy's. Pappy's in the parking lot of, of uh, Blossom Stadium. Yeah, it's called the Hack Shack now. I met my high school sweetheart. Did you? I nice. did. I did. Yeah. And you met her in high school, or? Oh yeah, yeah. She went to Kirby. I went to Kitty Hawk. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice. Mm -mm. No. No, it was. It was not answering you. Or not? No, it was football. <laughs> was, I, I mean, I had a girlfriend every now and then, but I ended up m marrying my wife. I didn't meet her until m the end of my uh, first year as a GA. I got through playing football in college. Oh, mine is Remember the Titans. Well, what, what jumped in my mind was Rocky. Rocky. Oh, I know why. Yeah, I know why. That, it was one of those things, that the theme song was one of our songs that we heard walking into the locker room all the time, you know, especially the bigger the game, you know, it was Rocky. Uh, when we played Churchill, it was Winston Churchill speaking, like blaring all the time. You walk in, you're like, oh my God! It was the, the theme to Patton, you know, the movie Patton, it was that theme, that was, yeah. yep. Coming up, we get an inside look into ABC's time with Uvalde football team this past year and just in time for their matchup today. Welcome back. The KSAT Pigskin Classic is here and one of the games in the lineup today is the matchup between Uvalde and Jefferson. ABC News kept a crew in Uvalde for an entire year following the tragedy at Robb Elementary. The crew got a welcome to follow the Uvalde team for the entire season in 2022 to get a look at how the team was front and center with helping Uvalde heal. Sports producer Daniel Villanueva sat down with one of their producers to get the story. And you can see more of this story later today during our pregame show following game one with Somerset and Southside right here live on KSAT. And they're having lots of fun over there. Yeah, the they are. Sarahs and Max, they're bringing that energy. Listen, I'm impressed <laughs> by the athleticism. There has been some uh, on-point throws, some deep passes, and uh, a perfect field goal by Sarah Spivey. I mean, last year it, it took her mm -hmm. three attempts. This year, 
right off the bat. She's been practicing. Yeah, and Mike never left. Mike never left. <laughs> he might have spent the night in Yalamoto. We can't confirm. We don't he know. just loves high school football so much. He does, and there's going to be so much excitement out there today. We're going to have crews in and out all day long, three big games, and we're excited to go meet uh, yes. all, all the fans out there. It's going to be a lot of fun, fans of the football game. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to, uh, to talk and talk football. Yeah, I'm excited to see the students, the bands, the families. It's going to be great. All of it. All of that. I love football. I love it all. What was your favorite part last year? Oh, man. the ga Well, the games were so incredible. Mm -hmm. They were so close. Those were some of the best high school football games of the year. Yep. And, you know, it's something about playing in the Alamo Dome. Like, the teams get up for the game. So, you know they're going to be tight, and these are rivals. So, you know these games are going to be some of the best. Special games right there. Special games. Good football. Good environment, and we have our own KSAT mascot there too. So Mike, he's going to be out there. Yes, not to be confused with Mike Ostrich. Mike, <laughs> both Mike mics are going to be there. Okay? Yeah, they'll both be there. Yeah. yeah, we have so much to come. We'll be right back.